There was in grad school, there was a, I looked at nearly 800 drumming logs and I remember this one bird. And I, I kind of like to, sometimes I anthropomorphize birds, but I feel like they're kind of spicy. They've got attitude and uh, they're tricky. And there's this one male I remember vividly and he was like a little flame up on this log and the sun was coming in behind him. It was early sun and it was one of those really clear days and this bird was on the edge of a clear cut and he was on a big log next to a pine and a bunch of hazelnut. And he was out there doing his head flick and his fan and he had the most red I've ever seen in a ruff or the terminal band. And when the sun hit those feathers, he was like a and he had a red, uh, he just had that really striking red all over and he was just like a little flame dancing up on that log and he was strutting back and forth and eventually he, I bumped him when I was going in to check his log but I think that's one of those birds that I'll never forget and there have been plenty more obviously hunting um, but if I had one individual bird to pick out that was in my early years of figuring grouse out and studying grouse and that bird was one of the ones that I can think back on and really say that they help spark my interest beyond just the normal and become a passion. My name is Meadow Kaufeld. I'm 33 years old and I'm a biologist for the Rough Grouse Society here based in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. I've uh, always loved gallinaceous birds since I was really small, five or four. I remember getting flogged by chickens, <laughs> going after their chicks, and they've always been a fascination of mine, and grouse fit in that category, and obviously woodcock are something that's come on more recently with life and understanding them and appreciating them, and to be a biologist for the Rough Grouse Society is just really great. I can't express that enough and uh, it really has been a dream job and I can't see that changing. Depends on time of year, um, obviously this fall, I've had the opportunity to be more involved with hunter recruitment and retention and obviously take folks out hunting uh, in part as a teaching uh, method for grouse and woodcock. But you know, some days they may find me traveling to Michigan to attend a forest planning meeting or uh, writing a grant for funding for either the women's intro to lean shooting program or uh, some habitat work that we're working on or would like to work on. And then other days I may be writing an article for the magazine, carrying a camera through the field on a field meeting to document some of the events of the day or um, teaching folks. So a lot of times we have educational programs that we participate in either for loggers or um, natural resource students, uh, landowners. It's pretty much endless. It's, I feel like a big part of the job is teaching and uh, representing the birds and hunters. And, uh, so yeah, I guess there really is no day to day, what is the day in the life of, it's different every day. So you can see that the ear is actually in front of the eye, and I have a skull at home that shows it even better, but the woodcock, because of the fact that they have that, you know, 360 degree yeah. view. God's leftovers. Yep, yeah, so they have, their brain isn't up here like a normal bird, it's actually underneath oh, their, so yeah. that. and so it's, it's completely flipped, so the brain is upside down. The ears are in front of the eyes, and when you look at the skull, you know the normal that where that cervical vertebrae typically attaches in the back here, but these guys is actually up and underneath. Really neat, and it's pretty obvious when you have the uh, grouse and a woodcock skull in hand. It's pretty neat. One of the biggest and most important issues we're facing as wildlife managers and as sportsmen and women is hunter recruitment and retention because if we don't have future hunters that come in and participate, buy licenses, spend money, and, and, and above all, care about the wildlife that we have here with the personal interest that they do in this day and age, we're really in trouble because 
Sportsmen con or have been the original conservationists, and if, if, if it wasn't for sportsmen back in the day, a lot of these wildlife species that we are complaining about, like white-tailed deer, turkeys, and their superabundance, they may not even exist if it wasn't for folks that cared and that were interested because they were sportsmen and they enjoyed sport hunting. And so I think the number one issue that I would be concerned about in whether or not it's as a biologist looking at ecology and management or any aspect of my job or as a sportswoman, the number one issue I think that is most important and needs to be a focus is hunter recruitment attention because if we don't have those people, we don't have a future. You know, uh, grouse and woodcock hunters and a lot of hunters in general, and I'm guilty of this myself, are soloists. We like to be in the woods alone. And to be honest, we don't get that much time to spend in the woods. And so that time becomes extra precious. But it's incredibly important to take your child or a relative, your neighbor, a friend. It's incredibly important to take them out in the field and tolerate having somebody along because a lot of those folks don't have the opportunity. A lot of little kids, much less little girls, don't have the opportunity to go out. And it isn't because they're disinterested or incapable. It may be because they've never had the opportunity. So it's really important that you just take the time and you give up that little bit of time for yourself and take somebody and give them a positive experience in the field. I think that's really important.